so guess what just came in the mail this morning it's our new book advanced taxation a book that is based on the ICA syllabus for students writing principle of taxation in, le in level two and advanced taxation in level three I'm very much excited about this book because it is based on the ICAC syllabus strictly based on the ICAC syllabus and also based on the new laws the new acts new regulations that governs taxation in Ghana as required by the revised syllabus of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana. I'm very much excited about this copy uh, that has been released, published in the UK less than a month ago. And uh, you know, everything about this book is superb. It's going to be assisting you, be your master guide in order for you to prepare well for your examination. And guess what? It is just 120 Ghana cities. And so we are going to be starting delivery immediately for the people who pre-ordered the book because we had a lot of students pre-ordering the book prior to its release due to the pandemic but hey it's now going to be available and so you can call or whatsapp 050 9296 and grab your copy of this book because i know that uh it's going to be assisting you if you follow up my work simplicity in detail is something that i do and that is something that is critical and i know this book is going to assist you in order for you to prepare well for your examination now, so somebody may be asking, hey, Shira, what are some of the things you covered? You can see that displayed on your screen, but we covered the Ghana tax system, tax administration in Ghana, fiscal policy, capital allowance, corporate tax liabilities, withholding tax, uh, chargeable income or chargeable gains, the three-tier Ghana national pension scheme, income tax liabilities on natural resources, petroleum operations, mineral and mining operations, standard tax planning, standard tax issues, professional conduct in relation to taxation, and any other thing that you need in order for you to prepare well for your examination. So what are you waiting for? Call the number 050-114-9296 and grab a copy today for your examination. I know this can assist you to prepare well for your examination. See ya. Hi everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Very much excited for having you on the live stream. It's always a pleasure coming your way. I see some of you guys joining and we are doing some Q and A's today and to be able to answer any questions that you are having. So if you join the stream, smash the like button and let's get more engagement on the video but most importantly comment in the chat box any questions you have for me and whatever it is you want me to share my thoughts on let me know also how your revisions is going so far uh towards the ICA november 2020 examination so this is a serious q a session so comment in the chat box any questions you have for me if you are revising you are learning something that you've not been able to uh uh, or you don't understand something or you have any challenge with anything, put it in the chat box, put it in the comment box. I'm going to be looking at all of your comments and then answer them for you in that case. So welcome to the stream today. It's always a pleasure coming your way on the live stream. I see some comments coming in there already and I see some people giving us a thumbs up on the video. Thank you very much. When you join the stream, smash the like button. That way we get more engagement on the video. So Mustafa Tunkara said, hi, hello Mustafa, I hope you're doing well. He said, I'm from Sierra Leone, all right. Welcome to the live stream. Nuru said, hi sir, uh, we are patiently waiting, waiting for a question dealing with overhead variance in performance difference. Overhead variance in performance difference. Okay. Okay, I don't know if we will be able to have time for that uh, as soon as possible, but whatever it is, when we get it, when we have the time, we'll be able to cover that. Uh, Nicole Williams said, hi. Hello, Nicole. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Labby Benjamin said, good evening, said, said, I've been, it's been a long time here. Yep. Uh, we started with our executive revision masterclass this week. So um, it's really been absorbing uh, some of my time in that case. So our executive regime masterclass is ongoing and 
uh, as most importantly, these three weeks, we really pack a lot of things into it and we do a lot of work, uh, practice a lot of questions, have a couple of uh, uh, private sessions as well. So it's been taking my time, really. That is why I think on Monday and yesterday, I was not on the live stream with you, but we are seeing how we can uh, jump in and be able to answer any questions. That is why I am uh, here today. So comment in the chat box any questions you have for me so that I will answer them for you. So whatever questions you have, put them in the chat box. want to hear from you. Most importantly, also smash the like button. That way we get more engagement. Consider to also share the video with your friends, your colleagues, and those who will be interested. You know we have a lot of content already on the channel. And subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to the channel as well we are growing massively and thank you very much you guys for the support on the channel um sherry rose said hi sir um from jamaica using your tips for college final okay okay yeah uh sherry I guess we've uh, uh shared about this as well george ampofo said hi sir please will you cover any more topics on man accounting? I I cannot tell what you mean by whether I will cover more topics, but I I can't tell. I can't tell per where we are now. If there is anything, it will be some Q and A sessions that I'll be coming to do, sharing some thoughts with you, or probably solving some questions. So really, I may not be able to uh, solve or do any new topics if you are. Uh, somebody who would want to really have access to our complete lectures and also be able to join us for our executive revision masterclass, then maybe you can uh, register for our executive revision masterclass. It's 250 per paper. That way you get access to the full lecture videos, join our Zoom sessions, and also have a one-on-one -on -one session with me. So that is what I will say in relation to that, Judge Ampofo. Um, Mom, Anne said, hi. Hello, Mom. Hope you're doing well. Margaret uh, Bashiru said, Sir, good evening. Hello, good evening, Margaret. Uh, please, I'm about, please, I'm not about to start prepare for man accounting and financial management November 2020. Is it possible I pass? Hey, <laughs> Margaret, you are about to start preparation for uh, man accounting and financial management. Hey, uh, have you been studying already? But because if you say you are about to start, it means after now will start it. And if it is a, if it is something that you are you've written before, then probably you have a, you know some of the things. So you'll be doing uh, revisions in some of the topics, and then you just continue with the others. But if you've not written the paper before, I wouldn't advise you for uh, or to go into the exam so if you have not registered yet and this is your first time you are registering for these papers and uh you are doing man accounting and financial management i wouldn't want to give you a false hope uh it will be better you go for may 2020 sorry may 2021 okay so margaret bushira that is what i will did i say bushira uh bashiru uh that is what i will say in relation to that Patient pencil said, uh, I think good vibes. All right, some emoji there. Uh, Margaret Bashiru said, Now, okay, so you are now starting. Like I said, Margaret, let me know is this the first time you are writing man accounting and financial management, or um, you've written it before and you are resitting? Let me know in the chat box, Margaret, uh, so that maybe I can provide you with some specific uh, advice here. So let me know, is this the first time you are writing the paper or you are resitting? And when was the last time you wrote the paper so that I can provide you with some uh, strategies in there? So I see some of you guys joining the stream. Welcome to the stream today. Smash the like button when you join the stream and share the video as well uh, with some people. Let's get many people coming on the live stream and also be able to assist a lot of people on the live stream in relation to that. Let me know where you are watching from and also uh, comment in the chat box with any questions you have. Derek uh, Achina Brent Tool said, hi. So can you explain IFRS, uh, what, 24? 
What's IFRS 24? Do I even remember that? <laughs> did, you, did you say IFRS? IFRS 24. Okay, let me check my slide on that. Are you referring to IAS 24 or IFRS 24? Because it's IAS 24, I know, related party transactions. So let me know if that is what you are referring to. Margaret Bashiri said, I have not written it before. Oh, Margaret, no, 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 no. I won't advise you to do that. I will not advise you to do that. And you are writing the IC in November 2020 exams, and you have two weeks or so before. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Have you registered already for the exams, Margaret? If you have registered, I will advise you defer. Uh, call back the ICA and then defer the course or write to them and defer the course and uh, do it next year, okay? Don't give yourself uh, unnecessary hope, all right? I will advise that uh, don't do it. So take it to November, that'll be better, okay, Margaret? So that is what I will say uh, to you. Then uh, Samuel Quaisin said, hi, sir, greetings. Hello, Samuel. I hope you are doing well and you are preparing for your uh, exams. Nayan Gupta said, hi, nice to see you, sir. How are you? Nayan, I'm doing well and I hope you are also doing well uh, there. Margaret said, I have been going for class, but I'm now about to personally prepare. You've been going for class. Okay, so... Okay, if you've been going for class, then, okay, then it's good. You can write. I thought you were like, you were saying that, oh, I've not been studying, but I'm now about to study. So if we, you've been attending lectures and you are now about to personally prepare, I don't know where you attend lectures. If they do, uh, if they have revision sessions ongoing, that will be strategic. That will be uh, definite for you to prepare well for the exams. Why not? Then you can go for it in relation to that. But also, if you are uh, looking for uh, a place also to study for the rest of the periods available, our executive region masterclass is ongoing, and uh, you can enroll. It's 250 per paper. This gives you access to our course, our study portal. So you get access to all our courses on everything that we've covered so far. You get access to our question kits our uh, question catalog. You'll be able to also join our Zoom sessions. And most importantly, you have a one-on-one -on -one session with me well so that I can uh, mentor you and assist you better to prepare well for the examination. So if you have been attending lectures and now you are going to uh, really put in the work, then if you put in the work well, you can pull the trigger and then you'll be able to do well. Okay, Margaret. So I think uh, that is what I would say there. I see some of you guys joining the stream. Welcome to the stream. It's a special executive uh, revision Q&A session. So you comment in the chat box any questions you have for me. Probably you are studying something that you don't understand, something you would want me to share my thoughts on. Comment in the chat box and then let me know uh, what you would want me to share my thoughts on. Also, remember to share the video and let's reach a lot of students watching the stream. Share it on WhatsApp, on Facebook, and other uh, platforms and let's get many students joining the stream in that case nayan gupta said exams are too close give some important topics for acca f9 i think i've told you about uh this before i don't know if you were on the stream around last week or so f9 financial management critical areas that you need to focus on business valuation there's going to be a question on that uh cost of capital there's going to be question on that it uh cost of equity, cost of uh, debt, and then weighted average cost of capital is a very critical area. And there will be questions coming uh, from there. Then also the issue in relation to uh, business finance, that is sources of finance as is very critical. Theory area, the issues about Islamic finance is very critical in there. Then risks, risk management, foreign exchange risk management, and then uh, interest stress rate risk management. These are all critical areas that the examiner will be setting some questions around. So Nayan Gupta, F9, uh, ACCA F9, financial management. These are what I will say there. Christiana Siedu said, good afternoon, sir. 
Please, can you explain how the treatment of revaluation of non-current assets and deferred tax assets? Can you explain how the treatment? Oh, ah. Are you asking how we treat revaluation of non-current assets and deferred tax? I don't know. Christiana, if you are still online, I hope you're still online. Maybe rephrase your question for me so I can answer you better. I kind of don't understand the context of the question well, all right? So please uh, restate that for me. Are you talking about the treatment of revaluation of non-current assets and defer tax on non-current assets or what? So please re-clarify the question for me. I see some of you guys coming on. Welcome to the live stream. This is our uh, uh, executive revision uh, Q&A session. So you comment in the chat box any questions you have for me, whatever you are studying that you want me to share my thoughts on real quick to assist you so you can uh, prepare well for the exams in the next three weeks or less than three weeks. We have the exams coming on. Nicole Williams said, Sir, I'm now in a critical mode in terms of my studying for the advanced audit exams in December. My sleep has reduced, but hopefully the hard work will pay off. Definitely, I can guarantee you, Nicole, the hard work will definitely pay off. Once you are consistent, you practice a lot of questions, and you know you understand the structure of the examination, definitely you will be able to uh, do well. I wish you all the best in the paper. Derek said, please, uh, I, uh, please it's IAS24. Okay, so uh, related party uh transactions now the related party sorry the related party transaction uh it's about uh how we treat uh transactions relating to uh businesses that have certain relationship like a parent and a subsidiary or a parent uh, a company with its associate or a company with its uh, other party. Now, what happens under IAS 24 is that the standard states that all related party transactions must be disclosed in the accounting year. So for instance, let's say that I have a company and you also have a company, and let's say that we are brothers in relation to that and my company sells to your company and nine out of 10, we don't sell to you at a profit. Probably we sell to you just at a cost. So we don't put profit on it. In my books, I am required to disclose that throughout the, or uh, during the year, I sold a certain amount of goods to you at cost. If it has to be disclosed in the footnote and you have to also disclose it in your notes that, uh, during the year you bought some goods from me and I sold it to you at the cost price and not as the selling price. So it means that your expenses are going to go down and shareholders must know why the expenses is going up, down and the profits is going up. So that is the idea about IAS 24 uh related party disclosure so it is requ it requires that all related party transactions during the year are supposed to be disclosed in the footnotes and that will enhance faithful representation of financial statements and also increase the reliability of the financial statements by the users of the financial statements so that is what i would say there in relation to that Alhaji Jalo said, any comments on the difference between IFRS and GAAP with regards to balance sheet? Ignore the presentation style. Okay, so GAAP usually have to do with the issue in relation to the U.S. GAAP. Um, when it comes to IFR, now the IFRS is coming in line with the U.S. GAAP in relation to that. I don't know the context in which you are asking this question, though, but then Many of the IFRSs are now uh, coming in to reconcile with the gap so that the treatment will be uh, the same. But what happens is that in some scenarios, uh, the gap requires some further treatment, some further disclosure that IFRS may not require. But uh, the International Accounting Standard Board is really trying to be able to uh, bring these two together so that whether you are using the GAB or you are using IFRS, as far as this is an item, it will all be treated in the same manner. Samuel Quaisin said, please, mine is advanced audit and strategic case study. This will be my second time. Uh, sad for it last sitting. Okay. I hope that you are attending lectures uh, for these papers. 
or probably you are attending a revision session somewhere for these papers because it's very critical for you to these are all reading papers with strategic case study having some computation aspects under the financial perspective so i hope that some question you attended lectures if you did not i hope that you are preparing to you have uh, registered for a revision session or something like that if you have not also you could also join our executive revision master class it's 250 ghana cities per paper this gives you access to all our content on our study portal and also you'll be able to join our zoom sessions and most importantly the pre-scene discussion for the strategic case study so you'll be positioned better to pass the exam this time around so that is what i will say to you some more question uh mustafa tunkara said i have i'm having problem with equivalent units and joint products and we are having management accounting on friday please say i need some explanation on both units and joint products all right so joint products are a product that are produced from a single production process okay so we have a single production process but it ends up uh to a certain split point, we get a, uh, a various component. For instance, when we are refining uh, crude oil, we get to a point in time where we get it into its various components, the kerosene, the diesel, paraffin wax, and all of the various components. So these are joint products. So what happens is that, uh, I don't know if this is in your scope of management accounting though, but uh, when we get to the joint uh products or the joint the split point uh the product may be further processed or will be sold at the joint at the split off point so the further processing is a short-term decision to de it's a short-term decision to decide whether to further process or not will be dependent on the relevant cost in the incremental cost of further processing and then the incremental selling price after the further processing. Which means that when you are making further processing decisions, the joint cost becomes irrelevant because you'll be going to be incurring the joint cost. However, the incremental cost of further processing and then the incremental sales value after the further processing will be considered. Where the incremental revenue is more than the incremental cost we further process the product after the split off point if the incremental cost is more than the incremental revenue then we sell it at the split off point in relation to that then the issue about equivalent units comes to play about uh companies or entities in process costing not finishing the product at a given point so it can be a uh, hundred percent material completed it can be uh 80 percent labor completed it can be uh 40 percent overhead completed so whatever it is you're going to use that co uh, concept to be able to calculate the equivalent unit i don't know if we have some content on uh process costing on the channel but you can check this playlist fundamentals in management accounting you can check uh, check that playlist fundamental in management accounting i think we should have uh some content on process costing and that will help you to be able to uh answer the question on uh equivalent units so that is the idea there uh montaka sorry mustafa tunkara Okay, Senior Kawewa said, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Senior. I come across the word depreciating tax. Please help me understand. Depreciating tax. In what context are you asking that? Because that would be more or less like capital allowance when you are doing investment appraisal. But I don't know. Uh, maybe contextualize the question, then I can answer you better. Maybe you can contextualize, then I can answer that uh, better for you. So that is more or less like capital allowance. Uh, depreciating tax will be more or less like capital allowance. So if you are doing investment appraisal, depreciation is a non-cash item, so that is disallowed. In, instead, the tax authority will give you capital allowance. So the tax depreciation or depreciation tax will be the same as uh, capital allowance, I guess. 
yeah, that, that should be it. Alpha Isa Kenu said, or Kanu said, Hi, Mr. Premium. I'm about to sit audit and tax come December. I would like you to mentor me concerning the examination. Thanks in advance. Okay, so Alpha Isa Kanu, you can uh, WhatsApp 050-114-9296. 050-114-9296. If you are outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. You can see the number scrolling below your screen. So you pick it and you begin with plus 233, ignore the zero, and you can send me hi on WhatsApp, and then let's see uh, what we can do in relation to how I can mentor you in that case. Mustafa said, I want you to please treat with us bill of exchange okay bill of exchange is technically a negotiable instrument so uh maybe you can ask a specific question about it then i'll be able to deal with it for you um nayan gupta said instead of doing section 6c from kids is it sufficient to do past questions only for uh f9 fm paper uh the past questions only is not uh good i would recommend that you practice some of the questions from the question kit it will be really really helpful if you do that okay it will be really helpful if you do that so uh in addition to the past question because you see the question kit will have something new and then the past questions it's passed already and now some we, we we will hardly may not have repetition of the same questions or similar questions but then if you have the question kit in addition to the past questions then you have a better understanding in relation to that so nyan that is what i would say there now i see some of you guys joining the stream welcome to the live stream and give us a thumbs up on the video when you join smash the like button on the video when you join if you're having value on the stream so far smash the like button that way we get more engagement on the video and youtube and facebook will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible and in, in case you've not subscribed to the channel also i don't know why you've not subscribed to the channel but hit the subscribe button and most importantly hit also the bell notification icon that way when i go live or release new content you'll be the first person to be notified so thank you very much i see some of you smashing the like button thank you very much uh bachel fauzi said how will you compute an ideal transfer price if there is no external intermediate intermediate market there is an external intermediate market okay now, the computation of transfer price, if there are no external intermediate market, then it means that the division doing the sales would have to sell to the other division at most uh, slightly above the marginal cost of making the product. Slightly above the marginal cost of making the product. What it then means is that if uh, the one, let's say division A makes the product, and division b uh needs the product isn't it so division b can buy from outside for say ten dollars now division a cost of manufacturing it it's say seven dollars so it means that any price between seven dollars and ten dollars will be favorable so that division a will make some profit whilst selling it and then division b will also buy it below the price that they would have bought it from outside in relation to that. So in that case, uh, if the division B will not be able to buy it from outside and division A does not have any market, at most, they should sell it at the incremental cost or the marginal cost of making the product. Where there is an external market available, then that means that the transfer price will be the minimum of the marginal cost of making the product and the opportunity cost of not selling the product outside. Does it make sense? So if there is a market available, which means that if they give the product to the division B, who needs the product, they can sell it to the outside people. So it means the minimum transfer price acceptable by division A will be the marginal cost of manufacturing or making the product plus any opportunity cost, any benefit that they will lose for selling the product to division B in that case. So Bausa, uh, Bausua, uh, Fauzu, that is the answer to the question. Let me know if it makes sense for you in that case. Uh, cable Media PR, 
Wow. Hi, Ishira. Throw some light on critical areas for advanced auditing. What areas must be critically looked at for November 2020 sittings? Oh, uh, thanks. Um, I'll provide you with some general ideas, general thoughts in relation to that. Advanced auditing assurance is uh, a very technical paper that requires a lot of practice and deeper understanding of the scope of the syllables and also your ability to accurately answer the questions. Because sometimes you will be writing something that looks like English, but it's not English, you actually be, you may be digressing from the main requirement of the question. So before even you look at, oh, what are the key areas I need to, critical areas, you need to find out, do I really understand the scope of the syllables? And do I understand how to answer the audit and assurance question? If you get that out of the way, then certainly you got to be, uh, there are basic areas that the examiner will always set question on. Ethics is going to be there. Audit planning is going to be critical in there in relation to that. Audit procedure, audit evidence, all these areas, the examiner is going to be setting some questions on in relation to that. So these are some things that I can share with you on advanced audit and assurance. I hope You are attending lectures and possibly your lecturer, your lecturer will be able to uh, also assist you in relation to how you answer the question, how you need to uh, pen it out, the scope of the exams and all of those things in that case. So cable media PR, that is the answer I will give you. Christiana, I see what you said. I mean, deferred tax and revaluation. Okay. So when companies revalue assets, you know how we deal with it, right? First time revaluation, uh, if it is a loss, that means it's an impairment. And so that will be expense in the PL account. But if it is a gain, then that will go to the OCI and the revaluation surplus in the statement of financial position. Then also, uh, deferred tax on revaluation always goes to the OCI. The deferred tax on revaluation always goes into the OCI. So, Christiana, that is the idea in relation to deferred tax and then revaluation of assets. Let me know if the explanation is clearer. If not, then let me know what, what, what I missed. What are the most exam areas for F2 exams? That is man accounting F2. Um, I wouldn't say the most exams areas, but I would say the key areas you have to focus on. Uh, budgeting is very critical there in F2. Standard costing is very critical there in F2. Then uh, a little of uh, some issues in relation to performance evaluation, just slightly, uh, is also critical there. That's going to be your section C aspect of the exams. Apart from these, you've got to make sure that you understand your uh, basic theory issues, and then also uh, absorption costing, marginal costing are going to be basic areas that you need to look out for there in that case. All right. George Ampofo said, sir, can you give us areas to focus for man accounting for this sit sitting? Um, again, uh, these things are generic. All right. I will not tell you areas to focus on especially uh, here, uh, what I would tell you is that you need to make sure you understand the management accounting syllabus and make sure you understand the scope of each of the topics because there is going to be question on budgeting. There will be question on variance analysis. There will be question on performance measurement. There will be question on short-term decisions. There will be question on uh, issues in relation to the theory areas of the syllabus. So I don't want you to just say which areas will I focus on because there will be questions coming from all areas of the syllabus. What I would want you to do with relating to uh, man accounting is you make sure that you understand the scope of the syllabus, practice a lot of questions, functional budget, master budget, variance analysis, performance evaluation, divisional performance evaluation, the balance scorecard, just understand everything the short-term decisions understand all of the principles don't pick and choose because the man accounting exams is generic and if you're I, like i say all the time to my students and i'm going to be laughing at them tonight uh, as well is that if your english is not good you are going to be punished in management accounting 
All right. And I used to, I use this to laugh at my students a lot because man accounting, it's uh, technical. And so that is what I'll say there, George. Don't say, oh, let me focus on this thing, uh, functional budget. Let me focus on divisionalization. No, 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 no. You got to make sure you understand the scope of the syllabus and most importantly, understand how to answer the questions when the examiner makes a certain statement. That will save you a lot of time and will reduce your chances of actually failing the exams. Nicole Williams said, Sir, explain the five steps critical for revenue recognition as per IFRS 15. Okay, so per IFRS 15, number one, we look at uh, the fact that the uh, what identification of contract with customers. For us to identify a contract with customers, number one, the contract must have a commercial value. Number two, the parties to the contract must agree to the terms of the contract. Number three, the rights and obligation for, un for each party uh, under the contract has to also be known. So that is the first one, identification of the contract with customers. Uh, then number two, you identify the performance obligation. This refers to the activity, or the, goods and the goods to be transferred or services to be rendered to the customer in exchange of the consideration received. So we identify what is it that we're going to be doing under this contract. That is going to be coming in step two. Then step three, you determine the transaction price, which means how much consideration we are actually going to be receiving under this contract. So we identify that one as well, and we state that as well in our books in relation to that. Then step four, we now allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation using their standalone prices. Okay, so let me give an example. Let's say that uh, you employ me to be your private lecturer uh, for the exams, and then um, uh, we agree that I'm going to take you $1,000. So let's say that under the deal, what is the performance obligation? Okay, I'm going to teach you, number one, and then I'm going to you're going to have access to our free online study portal, number two, and you're going to have access to my ebooks. So these are the performance obligation. Okay, step three, the transaction price. How, ma how much am I charging? $1,000. Okay, assuming I am teaching a loan, how much would I have charged? Probably I would have charged uh, around $800. If you are getting access to the study portal alone, how much will it be? Probably $300. If you're getting access to our ebooks, how much will it be? Probably $100. So if you sum it up, it's, it's becoming something like uh, probably $1,100, but you are paying just $1,000 for it. So we use the $1,000, which is the transaction price, to allocate to each of the activities I'm going to be doing for you using their standalone prices. So once we allocate, uh, that's step four. Step five, you recognize revenue as and when a performance obligation is satisfied. So if, I, if we enter the contract, I've not started teaching you, but then, boom, you have access to the study portal. So I could recognize revenue. Boom, you have access to the ebooks. So I could recognize revenue in respect of that. So we can recognize revenue at, that is at the date of the contract. And then we will recognize the rest of the revenue over the period that I'm teaching you in relation to that. So IFRS 12, these are the five steps we go through. So Nicole, that is it about that. Let me know if that is clear. Foster Anin said, Mr. Premium, I like premium alone. I like premium or insurer alone. All right. So do you have a, what? Do you have already made videos for final papers that we can buy and use to prepare for the next diet? Yes, we have our online courses available that you can enroll in and uh, get access to the lecture videos, the ebooks catalog, and also be able to prepare for the exam. So yes, Foster, you can get access to our lecture videos on our study portal. You can call or WhatsApp 050 1149296 You can see the number scrolling below your screen. So yes, there are contents available for you to get access to, pay for, and get access to. Latifa to Idrisu, or uh, Latifa to Idrisu. Please, a critical areas to look at with regards to principles of taxation and financial reporting. All right. Um, again, it goes back to everything I keep on telling you guys. Uh, principle of taxation, there are 
core areas the examiner will definitely set questions on income tax liabilities of individuals whether i like it or not there's a question there waiting for you corporate tax liabilities there's a question there waiting for you with capital allowance value added tax there's a question there waiting for you uh withholding tax there is a question there uh waiting for you in relation to that then certainly tax administration there is a question there waiting for you so when it comes to principle of taxation these are the things that you need to understand in relation to that then for financial reporting like i say all the time um the critical areas are the critical areas so conceptual framework there is question coming on that business ethics there is a question on that in the fr ratios there is a question on that accounting standards you have to be strong in your standards to be able to prepare the single entity then definitely console is going to be there so all, what i would advise to you is you spread your wings up and that is the advice i give to my students all the time you go to question five first answer the theory there come to question four do the ratios go to question two do the standards come back to question three come and do the single entity then do consolidation last answer console last don't go and answer console first answer it last so that is what i would say latifa to idrisu for you in that case foster and in said if you don't have videos i will suggest you start doing that for people like us who gets we already have okay foster we already have our courses available online we started having our online courses about three years ago or so so we we are into that already and we have it available so like i said you can call our whatsapp 050 114 050 114 some said right i see some of you guys joining welcome to the live stream uh comment below with any questions that you have uh, today i'm just answering people question i'm very much excited about it i like the questions that are coming in here uh for me today so you comment below with any questions you have i'll pull your question up on the screen and then we'll be able to answer your questions for you smash the like button when you join that way we get more engagement on the video and youtube and facebook will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible as you know already you should also share the video then we can get to a lot of people and if you are watching and you have not subscribed to the channel man what are you waiting for smash the like button and smash also the subscribe button and click on the bell notification icon that way when i go live or release new content you'll be the first person to be notified thank you very much i see some of you guys smashing the like button already on facebook and on youtube thank you very much really appreciate it thank you thank you thank you Someone said, please, how do we go about answering audit report questions? Normally, a scenario is given and the question asks to the impact on the auditor's report. Yes. Uh, so once the scenario is given, you have to read the scenario and then find out whether it will result into modification of the auditor's report or what actions the auditor must take before issuing the auditor's report. Because uh, if, for instance, the scenario has been given and uh, we are undertaking a hot review, that is a review that is undertaken before the issuance of the audit report, and uh, we realize that, oh, there was an item uh, that will affect, there was a subsequent event that will affect the going concern of the organization, that means that we have to make sure that uh, we include that in our auditor's report uh, in relation to that. Yes, we're going to issue a qualified opinion, sorry, an unqualified opinion, but probably key audit matters would have to be included there. Or maybe there are things we need to bring to the knowledge of the shareholders, which management might be hidden from the shareholders. So that is other matters paragraph. Or there are things that management treated per the scenario that uh in our opinion we need to bring to the knowledge of the shareholders key users of the financial statement then we will include it in the emphasis of matter paragraph so and then we will find out whether our opinion would have to be changed whether we will issue a modified opinion or an unmodified opinion in our auditors auditors financial statement so it's all scenario based like i said it's about practicing questions and this is not just one day thing like i tell you like this you should be able to go through questions be guided on them then you can successfully answer 
questions in that nature. So Samuel, that is what I would say there. Nicole said, you are a gem. Perfectly explained. Thanks. You are welcome, Nicole. Um, Senior Kewawa said, how do we treat income tax provisions? Um, when you say income tax provisions, it's treatment where? Is it in financial reporting, Senior Kewawa? Uh, Kewewa. Forgive me if I don't mention your name right, okay, Senior? Uh, maybe I'll just stay with the Senior. Tax provision, how? Like, in what subject? Financial reporting, in the financial statement, or what? If the financial reporting, tax provision is expenses. So we take it to the PL account and uh, we take it as well to the statement of financial position, okay? Under current liabilities in that case. Uh, Edward Barr said, please explain the treatment of unwinding interest, okay? Uh, treatment of unwinding interest comes in under IAS 37 provisions, contingent liabilities, contingent assets, where an entity is making uh, a contingent payment uh, or a an entity is making provision for environmental cost. So we are supposed to make a payment in the future and then we discount it to present terms. And then it, it depends. If it's an expenses, then we'll write it off and credit the provision. If it's related to an asset, then we'll debit the property, plant, and equipment, and then uh, credits provisions. However, after that initial recognition, there has to be unwinding. So the unwinding or unwinding, I think one of my students doesn't like them at all. Unwinding or unwinding uh, will be the present value multiplied by the cost of capital of the entity, the present value multiplied by the cost of capital of the entity, and that is debited to the PL account and credited to the provisions account in respect of what it is that we are providing for in relation to that. So if you ask the treatment of unwinding interest, we debit the PL account, that is an expenses, and then we credit the provisions in the statement of financial position, meaning the unwinding will be added to the initially recognized provisions, and that is what will go to the statement of financial position in that case. So, Edward Ba, Edward Ba, I guess, Edward Ba, uh, that is the answer to the question. Samuel Kwesi said, Thank you, I'm grateful, you are welcome. Nayan Gupta said, said Doing single kits is sufficient for uh, F9. It, it is all about time, okay? You will never be able to cover everything there is to cover uh, or solve as much questions as you think you are supposed to solve. But if you have the time, go for it. Do as many as you can. But if you don't have the time, the little you can do, make sure that you do it and do it well, and you will be in a better position to pass the exam. So what I would say is that... Um, a single case is there enough? Yes, it is sufficient. Once you, you see, the, the, what I say to you guys always is this: your passing of the exams is not just about how many questions you solve, but it's about your understanding of the basic principles. If you understand the basic principles, then definitely you will be able to do the treatment in relation to what is going on. So it's about understanding the basic principles and knowing the requirements that you are supposed to give in relation to that. So basic principles, make sure you understand them. Then when you solve one or two questions or one a single case question, you will be in a better position to pass the exam. So spend time understanding the principles, then you solve questions in that case. Okay, so Nayan said, thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your evening. India, uh, that will be around, whatever, is it 10 p.m. or so? Or 9 p.m. around India. Okay, so you enjoy and have a good night, Nayan. Have a good night. Right, so any other questions for me real quick? Comment below. Uh, I see some of you guys joining the stream. This is a Q&A session. I've been answering a couple of questions from you guys, and it's been great so far. So let me know when you join the stream, smash the like button for us, and also comment below with any questions that you have. We will be back shortly.
Hi everyone, so guess what just came in the mail this morning? It's our new book, Advanced Taxation, a book that is based on the ICA syllabus for students writing Principle of Taxation in, Le in Level 2 and Advanced Taxation in Level 3. I'm very much excited about this book because it is based on the ICAC syllabus, strictly based on the ICAC syllabus, and also based on the new laws, the new acts, new regulations that governs taxation in Ghana as required by the revised syllabus of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana. I'm very much excited about this copy uh, that has been released, published in the UK less than a month ago. And uh, you know, everything about this book is superb. It's going to be assisting you, be your master guide in order for you to prepare all for your examination. And guess what? It is just 120 Ghana cities. And so we are going to be starting delivery immediately for the people who pre-ordered the book because we had a lot of students pre-ordering the book prior to its release due to the pandemic. But hey, it's now going to be available. And so you can call or WhatsApp 050 9296 and grab your copy of this book because I know that uh, it's going to be assisting you if you're a follow of my work, simplicity in detail is something that I do and that is something that is critical and I know Hi, so welcome back. I see some comments coming in there. Let's look at them real quick as well. Edward Barr said, God bless you. We'll organize intervention for FR and PSA. I don't know if you're asking whether uh, our executive revision masterclass is actually ongoing. We started on Monday and it is 250 Ghana cities per paper. So if you want to register for financial reporting and PSA, you can call or WhatsApp the number scrolling below the screen, 050-114-9296. So our executive regime masterclass is actually ongoing. So you can call or WhatsApp 050-114-9296. It's 250 Ghana cities per paper. You will get access to our online study portal, the, all the lecture videos for the last 15 weeks. You will be able to also get access to our ebooks, our question kits. Then you will also join our Zoom sessions, uh, both morning as well as evening session. Even if you miss, the lectures will still be available on the portal for you to be able to uh, use in relation to that. So, Edward Barr, if you're asking about our executive revision masterclass, yes, it is ongoing and you can. Uh, register for red. Senior said, when we are calculating tax, how do we treat tax provision in FR? Like I said, the tax provision is treated in the PNL account. So it's an expenses in the PNL account. And uh, since it's a provision, it will go under, uh, how do we call it? The statement of financial position under current liabilities as current tax. Please say uh, <clears throat> how to go how to go about this statement. The company purchased a machine costing fifty thousand in January. The money is paid in two months' time after the purchase months. Please explain it for me. Uh, I don't. In what context are you asking the question? Are you preparing the budget, cash flow, or like? Well, in what context? Let me know, Mustafa. Let me know the context in which you are asking the question. But then, if you buy an asset, you're going to debit uh, property, plant, and equipment. It's a machine. So, you debit property, plant, and equipment. I don't know if it is an FR question you are asking or MA question. So, maybe contextualize for me real quick. But then, you debit property, plant, and equipment or machine with the 50000 And then, you credit... Uh, creditors or payables because it's on credit. Okay, you said on cash budget. So if it's on cash budget, they made the payment, they bought the thing in January, so they won't pay anything in January. So meaning that this 50000 will be brought in uh, March, because February, March. So if they bought the thing in January, they will make the payment in March. So it means the 50000 will rather come in March when preparing the cash budget. Are you getting it? So Mustafa, they bought it in January, but they didn't pay anything. They will pay in two months time. So two months after the day, month of purchases in January. So that is February and March. So in March, you will be actually paying for that. So on your cash budget, the 50,000 will go under March 
with the label purchases of uh, 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 or payment for machine, payment for machine. So that is the treatment there. Senior Kewawa said, say that amount in US dollars. Which amount? Is it 50,000 US dollars, he said, I should say? Okay. All right. Any other questions for me? Real quick. 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 So that is it about uh, that. Um, like I said, you you are in the last period for your preparation towards the exams, and I hope that you are preparing well. For those of you, like I keep on saying, attending all intervention classes or whatever it is, note that the intervention class is uh, like a snapshot of what exactly is going to go on. But you've got to all sit down, uh, and uh, Charlie Monga calls it assiduity. It means that you sit down with your bat and you study. Okay? Sit down assiduity and study solve a lot of questions on your own don't think that because you are attending a revision class and or you are being taught by uh with all due respect whoever uh so you go and pass the exams no you need to sit down on your own and solve a lot of questions and that is what i'm currently having uh issue with with some of our students in here because people will not want to do assignments but they would want to be part of the class. And sometimes some people make some of these comments that it's not good. I see it very moronic, uh, but it's not good. Uh, some people will say that, oh, uh, if I don't do assignment, so what? If I don't solve questions, so what? If the final exam is what we are waiting for. When it get there, we will do it. Or if I don't do mock exams, what is it? The final exam is what we are looking for. That is moronic statement. Can you imagine that a coach and you don't go to, for training, uh, all players are training, then you don't attend training, then you think you will be featured on the day of the match? No. Leno Mercy is training every day. Uh, name them. Okay. They are training every day. And the same thing happens to your ability to pass the exams. You've got to be training. You've got to be practicing. So you are. You are not solving. And some of you, like I keep on saying, you open book once a week. That is when you attended, when you attend lectures. So when you get to the lecture hall, the lecturer, if the lecturer is uh, uh, favorable, they will say, what did we do last week? then you see people now flipping the book. They don't even have an idea what the heck they we did last week. And that is where you see people now flipping through. Then, three days to the exams, you are beginning to burn midnight candle. You are beginning to cram information. You are buying yourself emotional pressure. Do you see how tired you become when you finish writing the exams? Because I tell my students, on the exams day, you've got a cruise. I mean, you relax, you've done all the work, heavy-duty work. So on the exams day, maybe you have a chauffeur driving you, and you are just sitting at the back, you, you know, sipping something. You eat a good breakfast, sipping something, and then you just be flipping through your book, just trying to uh, flip through to see various theories that you need to remember, various definitions you need to recollect. No pressure, all right? Because you've been working, you've been working. And that is how you position yourself to pass the examination. So that is what I will say. Make sure you practice a lot of questions. Don't just say, oh, Insura Premium is lecturing me. I've joined intervention class for Insura Premium. And so that is all. No. No. You've got to sit down, solve questions on your own, because that is how you're actually going to pass the exams. I see some comments coming in. Let's see if we can address to them. Address them. Um, David... Obosu said, sir, please, I want to register after the November exams. Is it too late? 
I'm in level 300. How do I register with you? Okay. You can call on WhatsApp 050-114-9296. 050 uh david obosu sorry if i don't mention your name right okay david so you can call on whatsapp 050 the number scrolling below your screen and then directions will be given to you to register and then uh be enrolled on our study portal senior said i mean the amount you charging say is it in us dollars for the master class no 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 that is ghana cities so in case you are bringing it to the us dollars let's see 250 cities in us dollars probably like is it 50 dollars 250 cities in us dollars oh that's like 43 dollars that's 43 us dollars united states dollars okay so senior that's 43 united states dollars so it's less than 50 dollars okay foster enin said premium i know you have videos at your page but i what i mean is videos on cds that we can buy and carry uh with us for use no 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 no, no. that one it's not available and we are not going to even have that any time so for videos on cd no 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 or on pen drive we 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 are not gonna do we won't do that uh anytime going into the future or whatever oh the only thing you can get access to is our study portal and uh soon to be launched our mobile application that you can study with so for cd no that will not be available for consumption or for purchases uh this is your name I'm, i've rehearsed it like three times already when i did oh I, I rehearsed it three times before mentioning it forgive me if i don't mention it right okay uh cholofello uh cholofello did i mention that right i don't know but let's just go to the question forgive me if i don't mention your name right okay um hi so under ifr 16 if the right of use of an asset is transferred to the lessee is it an operating lease and if there is recognition of the lease liability, is he a finance lease? Okay, relax. 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 Under IFRS 16, it is the lessor who classifies the lease as a finance lease or an uh, uh, a capital lease. Sorry, as a finance lease or operating lease. Okay? The lessee only recognizes right of use and then the lease liability. So the lessor can classify the lease as a finance lease or an operating lease if the following one of the following criteria is met. One, if uh, there is a title transfer at the end of the lease term, or if the lease is almost equal to the useful life of the asset, or more than the useful life of the asset, or if the minimum lease payment is greater than the fair value of the asset, or if the asset is of a specialized nature, or if the lessee has an option to buy back the asset at the end of the lease term and the lessee is uh, setting to exercise that option. So if one of these will be, is present, then the lessor will classify the lease as, an, as a finance lease. But if none of these is present, then the lessor will classify the lease as an operating lease. But the lessee doesn't do classification of the lease. The lessee simply will recognize right of use and lease liability. However, IFRS 16 also gives an exception. The exception is that if the asset is of a low value, then they could treat it as a normal rental so that you don't recognize any uh, uh, asset, you don't recognize any liability, or if the lease term is a short term. So it's a short term lease that is less than one year, then there is no need to recognize right of use and lease liability. So uh cholofello uh that is the answer to the question did i explain what you wanted to hear let me know uh cholofello if i answered your question rightly for you okay so any other questions for me real quick 
Any other questions for me real quick? Any other questions for me real quick? Okay. Okay. So I'll be concluding around here today. Thank you very much for joining the stream. It's always a pleasure. And uh, it's been a great discussion so far with your questions, your challenges uh, in that case. I'm seeing uh, tomorrow, possibly, I will also come on the live stream. So any questions you have, any areas you have challenges with, you can join me on the live stream tomorrow and then ask me those questions and I'll be able to uh, provide you with some assistance in there in relation to that, okay? So thank you very much for joining the stream. Mustafa said, how to determine closing stock on master budget? Uh, that will be preparation of the budgeted income statement and certain information has to be given to you for you to determine the closing stock that is a whole uh discussion on its own mustafa so unfortunately i will not be able because it's when you are solving a question because certain variables should be given to you we should have the sales we should have the gross profit we should have the opening stock we should have the purchases then uh because from there we'll be able to get the balancing figure to be the uh, 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 uh how do we call it the closing stock so it depends certain variables should be given to you so that you will work backwards then the balancing figure will be treated as uh closing stock um foster and in said valued oh, okay uh i don't know what you meant by that Nayan Gupta said, it's always nice attend your sessions. It's always a pleasure, Nayan, uh, coming your way. So thank you very much for joining the stream. It's always my pleasure coming your way, assisting you in order for you to prepare well for your examination and most importantly, pass the exam. So thank you very much for taking time out every single time and joining me on the live stream. Remember that we have over 450 videos on the channel if it is about accounting standards we have them there management accounting there are contents there financial management there are contents there public sector there are contents there taxation in ghana there are contents there uh corporate reporting there are contents in there even strategic case study there are contents in there so whatever it is that you are doing 9.9 .9 percent of the time there are content already on the channel covering that. So you make sure that you explore the playlist on the channel and go through the videos in that case. So I'll see you same time tomorrow as we continue with our discussion. Thank you very much. You stay safe and you stay blessed. I'll see you same time tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. GMT. Bye-bye.